Hey, so if you've come from the other recording, uh, welcome to what'll be a new and interesting concept for this channel, where I actually show off the madness that comes from my brain, and we try and develop uh, this design. So, we've got two parts to think about for this design. The first part is going to be the cylinder that sits inside the fan casing um, and protrudes outwards. And the other part is going to be the actual frame that goes around it. So if we work on the cylinder for now, yeah, let's do the cylinder first, because that should, hopefully, he says, be the easiest bit. So let me remeasure this quickly. So zero that, and we're looking at 16.9, okay, 17 mil, basically, between end to end where the holes are in this fan. So I need a cylinder in there, but I also need the barb to go through the two holes. So the way I'm thinking of doing this would be I might produce, if I create a sketch and we start, oh, okay, why have we done that? We've moved to the left plane. It's not really what I want to do, so let's finish that step sketch quickly and just delete it. I like working on the top plane to start with, it gives me a fresh point. Okay, so if we think we're looking down on this, I need the barbs to come out from somewhere, but I also need the cylinder to come out from somewhere. So I'm just going to start with quite a simple base of uh, like rectangle. So let's do, so let's do a 10 mil rectangle maybe. Uh, I mean, width wise, uh, I was looking at 10 there. We probably want it to be about 10 mil here. 10 by five, we could do 10 by 10, a nice square actually, no rectangle here. And let's extrude that by say five mil. Okay, so now we've got a nice build off point um, to build everything off of. So let's measure these holes again to make sure we're working to something. So the holes to me are, they're probably just about, yeah, they're just about four mil from what I can read here. So we've extruded this at five mil, which is perfect. That'll give us some working room. So if I go and create a sketch on this plane, and we'll zoom in a little bit, I'm going to put some center lines in. I don't necessarily know if there's a, a center line tool yet. I mean, I can search for it quickly. Uh, center point, center mass, center rectangle, no center line necessarily. I could be wrong on that completely, but I like to just then add in my own at this point. And then what we'll do is we're going to do one not to four mil because I find that when I do it, sometimes I can't actually um, get a proper fit. We're going to do to 3.8. Uh, it's a small adjustment, but hopefully that should allow for when I actually have the build, I should be able to fully assemble it properly. And we'll extrude that. So let's think about the dimensions we've got here. So currently we've done 10 mil, which would leave 3.5 mil on each side because it's, I said it was 17, did I? Yeah, I said it was 17. So I give me 3.5 on each side to get to the holes. The whole depth itself, if I use my handy dandy vernier caliper again, will be about four mil, probably nearing five. So we probably want a little bit of clearance. So we will do 10 mil coming out or let's do eight just because I'm worried about the fit itself. So let's extrude this all of these by, oh, why is it saying degrees? We don't want that. I think I accidentally clicked something weird. That's fine. There we go. Let's do eight mil uh, extrusion here. And because we're gonna be putting it into something, I'm gonna just put a small one mil chamfer on there just to make it a bit easier to be able to hopefully um, not have a harsh corner. And then let's repeat that on the other side real quick. Create sketch, let's just chuck in some quick center lines. I could probably go from here actually, I don't need that second center line in. Uh, and then we said 3.8 and an extrusion of 
8 mil. Okay. And then let me just chuck that chamfer on before I forget. Perfect. So, so far, this is the block we've got. And what this should do is this should sit nicely in between the two holes on the fan. So now, what I might do just to make this piece a little nicer, um, I probably should do this at the end, but I don't think there's much more to this part than what we're doing. Let's chuck a, a one mil uh, fillet on the edges here, just to sort of give it a bit more of a finished product sort of feel, and it looks a little nicer already, rather than having those harsh edges. Um, so, now we need to consider what the top is. So we've already started in the top plane, so if I click there, this is where our top is. So, I've got a working room of 17 mil to make a circle in, uh, and this is 10 by 10. So let's maybe do, can I get a center point? Well, I mean, I know that's the center point, so that's not bad. We could just do a 10 mil um, circle for the inside cylinder. And I think for now, that sounds like a, a good plan. So the depth of this, would be, we're about, yeah, so we're about five mil in from the outside. So we need to go at least past five mil. So I'm going to say we'll do a 10 mil extrusion here. And let's make sure that that's going in the right direction. Yeah, it is lovely. Sometimes it will go into the product, uh, to the, the part that you're making. So I just wanted to make sure. Uh, so yeah, 10 mil seems good. Oh, that's my mistake. I exited that. This is why I don't tend to put this on the video. It's a bit of a long process, but there we go. Now I'm not going to chamfer this like I did the other ones because the hope is that this one is actually going to sit inside a cylindrical hole so that then I can push fit the two bits together basically to give a, a good joining to. Uh, we should have quite a decent bit of um, durability to this. I think the only thing that probably might have a little issue is these pegs might get a bit um, too much, it's too much force is pushed on them, they might snap. So I may look at some point to giving them a little bit of a strut which maybe runs from like here over to this edge here. But for now we will leave it and this should be our first part realistically. We should only need two of these, they should be quite a nice print, especially if I print them like this, they'll only need to do a little bit of support down here, a little bit down here, but everything else should be just built up, which would be nice. Um, and I'll get two of those printed um, soon. I probably won't do it now because otherwise you'll hear the audio of the printer. So now let's get a new design on the go. We'll come back and save this and export it as an STL in a bit. So this design has to be the housing. So this is a bit of a bigger piece um, and we probably want to take a bit more time working on this and trying to make sure that we do it the correct way. So if I'm saying, and in my drawing, I've done it so that the edge of the fan on both sides is how big my design is basically. We're saying it's as big as this fan. We're looking at a design that is probably bigger than my vernier calipers. Looks to be. Okay, so let's measure in between here and here instead. So that is 774. Um, and then if I add in, how much is this again? Well, 774 seemed wrong now. Yeah, very wrong, in fact, because my... My caliper's actually having some issues with this length. So what we're going to do, we'll go old-fashioned, because it doesn't seem to be able to work out what's going on there. I will just grab a ruler, and I'll measure across real quick. Not as accurate. Well, it could be, if it's depending on eye, obviously. Um... It's looking to be 163 millimeters. 
Yeah, about 163, 100, yeah, 163 millimeters across. Okay, so if that's the case, we need to start with our base square, which will be 163. So I'll just put that dimension in now. 163, and the width is going to be. Uh, how thick my monitor is basically. So again, I'll take my caliper and we will do a nice tight fit. Oh, it's not zeroed properly. Zero that off. There we go. We'll take a nice fit here. And we're looking at about 23 mil. I'll do 20, I'll do 23. And then because we're going to add the, we'll add the sides as an excess. So the sides will actually go out this way. And we'll extrude that to be, select that plane. Uh, we'll extrude that to be maybe three mil. Should be fine. And that's our, our first piece. And that's the length of the fan plus the width of the monitor right there. Cool. So now, from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly add in the two sides of the monitors just for ease of mind for me. Oh, and that's me ruining my desk as I've turned it. Okay, so on the front side, which we're calling this one because we've worked in the right plane, um, we're not a fool. So this is the front side. And I want to work off of this face, not off the front, because that'll take me a little bit further back. I want to come here. Oh, I have my issues with, um, I have my issues with uh, fusion. But I'm learning slowly to get along with it a little bit. Let's just make sure those dimensions are right. From here, that's three, which is exactly what we were after, and that's 163, which is exactly what we said. Perfect. I mean, I'll put that geometry in anyway, just for the sake of. Oh no, it's slightly longer. Well, I don't think that much of a difference will make it, but it's nice to have a bit more of a consistent look, and it's technically um, standard in engineering design to actually make sure that your lengths are correct. I don't know how to do um, some of the more advanced features when it comes to that sort of thing um, that I could do in SolidWorks. And I'm sure if any of my teachers are watching, I'm sure they wish I did know how to do that. But for now, uh, we live and learn. So again, I'm going to do... Oh, I don't know why I've done it like this. In fact, I almost did that a little wrong. Um, I don't want the depth to be three. So it's three mil at the top, and then I want it to come down 16 mil because that is the border of my monitor. It's 16 mil border, uh, well, 15. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna have this box come down instead of three, we're gonna have it come down 18 mil. No, that's up. Okay, so let's just undo all of that because apparently Fusion doesn't know what I want. Who knows what I want at this point? Well, I want subscribers, that's what I want, but oh my god, Fusion, give me strength. There we go. I hate having to click these. My worst nightmare. Um, so we want it to be 18 mil by one six three perfect so now we'll extrude this by three mil and see it's going the other way so i can either fix this by saying negative three or i can just come here and i can drag it to be the right distance there we go so now that's the first one done so now the back one on the other hand can go a bit deeper because it's just the back of my monitor and i don't need to worry about that a huge amount so let's start a sketch here. Of course I have to 
learn to live and use that hand. And let's do this. So the first one was 18. Let's go to 25 mil on this side, just to be able to give it a good bit of support in the back there. And I'll check those dimensions just to be sure. 25 mil, lovely. And 163, beautiful. So now I can go to extrude and I want to extrude. It's weirdly separated them, but that's fine. I think it's because there's this body here and this body here. And I'll do another three mil extrusion. Let's check that that's going the right way. It is beautiful. Everything looks good. Let's do that. And now this is our little housing for my monitor basically. So my monitor will sit in this groove and it should be nice and a snug fit which will help with the balance when it comes to um, tilting and sort of moving the fan around a little bit. I could maybe make it smaller but the last one I made was small um, and I didn't see an issue with that and I was looking to have a bit more of a sleeker design but I think now that I'm going bigger I'm just going to make everything else a bit bigger and it seems like a, a nice thing to do. So now, if I take a center point, let's just come to here quickly. And we will, oh, I will create a sketch on this front plane. And let's get a, a center point going. This is the center to here, okay. And then the center of this line, there, well, I mean, Let's just drag across. Um, so this is where the center of my fan will be, just above this. And we need to go out from the center. Well, if it's 163 across, I mean, I could work it out, but I do want to make sure what I'm doing is a bit more than that. So let's work this out real quick. So I'm just measuring from the center of the fan to the edge real quick, just to get some sort of bearing about what I'm doing. So it looks to be about 80 mil, which would make sense being at 163. It's probably, if I'm probably not lining it up hugely correctly, it's probably about 81.5, which, yeah, could have done the maths on that one, but, um, nah, I didn't, did I? So that's fine. What we're going to do, though, at that point, then, is if this is 163, that is the exact width of my fan, I should probably... Hmm, maybe I should have gone slightly bigger, or I could just work out here, and I could do a small 3 mil extrusion here, and then go up. That might not look too bad, actually. Let's do that on both sides then. We'll take a we'll take a little jab at this being the right way to do it. Um, as you can tell, I'm a complete professional because only professionals take jabs at how to do things properly. Um, so let's go and do. Yeah, let's do just. Let's do 5 mil because this is going to be the support point that I'm working off of. And let's do 5 mil here as well because we'll extrude both sides at the same time. Um, and I will need that to be a height of, if I can just work this out real quick. Oh, well, I mean, if it's 163 mil across, I need it to come 81.5. So that's fine. Let us go to solid extrusion and extrude here and here 81.5. Okay, what I am going to do is because, of course, I did this in a weird way, is I'm going to quickly come here. 
because I need to basically add some supports in here. So I could, yeah, if I make a sketch along here, if I create sketch here, and then I go from here to here, and let's check that that's in line with what I want. Yeah, it is. That red line's what I thought it was. And I'll make a small diagonal along there, and I'll do the same on the other side real quick. Here to here, perfect. And then we'll just extrude. Oh, okay, it wants me to do more lines. Sometimes you can get away with doing less lines in Fusion, which is quite nice actually. It's a little more intuitive than SolidWorks. But that's fine, let's extrude here and extrude here and it should be by, oh I've completely forgotten, but that's fine because I can just do it by eye. If it'll let me pan at all, it will, perfect. Uh, let's just take you along to there, let's make sure that that's right, oh beautiful. 29 of course, that makes sense. Okay, so now we've got our little arms, what I'll do is I'll clean them up and I'll shape them a little more later. But for now, we just want the base premise of what we're doing because, like, they are a little chunky right now. So, we've taken them up to the center point. We should probably, if I go back into this one, uh, edit feature, we should probably take them up a little higher than that because that's the center point. So we'd only be getting half of the cylinder we made earlier in that center point. So let's go up to 90. Uh, yeah, let's go up to 90. This makes more sense. And then what I can do is I should be able to work through... And if I make a sketch here, for example, which is going to be really difficult because this is in my way, and I haven't learned how to... If I hide this, it's going to hide the whole thing. Okay, cool. Let's, let's do that anyway. And what I'll do then is I will, yeah, that seems like the right thing to do. So we're going to go 81.5 up because that should take us to the center. And as I was talking about earlier, that would give us half of the um, circle that we need. So let's 81.5 this, beautiful. And then we made a, if we re you remember correctly, this was, I'll show it off, edit sketch, this was a 10mm diameter. So all we should have to do is go back to here and do a, so we don't want a 10mm hole because we said we want a tight fit. So we're looking at maybe doing 9.9. .9. I really don't want to have to push too hard on this design, honestly, because if I break another thing in this, I might break myself, if I'm honest. Um, and then we're going to go to extrude, because everything in Fusion is extrude rather than, um, rather than, like, uh, extrude or cut. And we're going to go to the cut setting, and we're going to select this. And what I'm going to do also is I'm going to do two sides and I'll take this this side in by not five. Okay, it's not gonna allow me to do it, finesse it into a smaller amount. So let's do by three, because this is a, it's a five mil project. And then what we're gonna do for the other side is because it makes my cuts in line properly there, is let's look at this. And let's take it to, oh god, that's a real harsh jump. So that should be touching, right? Yeah, it's not actually cutting in right now. And I want to take it in three from there. So 166. Perfect. And that'll cut both. 
how it cut both sides and less, of course, you click the wrong button. And then it'll cut no sides. And you've got to do it all again. But I remember the numbers, so it's fine. So we want to do this. We want to do two sides. This first side will be three. This other side will be 166. Ooh, no, the other way around then. 166. Six. Yeah, and then this one's three. Cool. Click OK, and that should give us now a little groove there and a little groove there. Perfect. And that should be where our um, cylinders that we made here go. That is where these will fit in. Um, and I'll show that in the assembly in a bit. Uh, I mean, I could do the assembly now, I guess, but let's just think about anything else. I mean, realistically, this is as basic as it gets. This would be suitable to sort of print now and hopefully make. So let's clean this up quickly and see if we can make it look a little, a little prettier than what it does now with some fillets of, say, would three look good? Mm, we could go a bit harsher. Uh, five. Six. Oh, okay. Let's do 15. Ooh, that. That is quite nice, actually. It's a little rounded. Maybe I could go a little more, because I don't like that spot in the middle. 17? Oh, no, we wanted to go back. 14. Yeah, 14 is just about fine. We could probably we could probably go back to 15 actually. And that's a bit, yeah. Do you know what? Stick with your first gut instinct. Um, so that will give us a nice bit there. Let's fillet these bottom bits quickly just to make it a bit more round around the screen. So only go with like a two there. Although, is that going to mess with my integrity here? Possibly not, because the majority of it's in the center. Um, these might be a little fragile, because I didn't take them into account when I was building the whole design, did I? Worst comes to worst, what I'll do is um, I will come in later and I will just add an extrusion completely here. Instead of it being like a half cut like it is now, I'll come in and I'll edit the bulk design here to add an extra like five mil on each side. But I think otherwise that's quite nice. If I could leave it like that, I'd be quite happy. Um, the underside is fine. We could probably, just for the sake of it, give these a little, a little one two. Also, one of the nice things about making it just a straight bar rather than adding in the corners like I did last time is that means I can slide this whole design across my screen rather than previously when there was the bar here because I made I wanted it to fit to the corner. Um, it meant if I wanted to slide it to the center of my screen to, I don't know, hit my face like dead on, um, I'd have a bit of a like a chunk in my screen here taken up by the print, which wasn't as nice. Uh, let's give that a two. Two looks nice. Um, and that's sort of our design, I think. Let's see if I can... Um, if I'm honest, I actually don't remember what I'm doing with this assemble button. I thought this was to build an assembly, but I don't think it is, in fact. Um, I don't know how to do an assembly in unless it's just... No, not a clue. So what we'll do instead is uh, we will just 3D print this. We can know that it'll, it should look all right by visualizing it in our heads a bit more maybe. Because um, yeah, I don't see a assembly button. Except this. Let's just click it and see. Um, oh, it's it's not done what I wanted to do. Let's just undo that then. Um, yeah, I'm not entirely sure how you would go about doing an assembly in um, 
infusion. I'll learn though. I'll learn and we'll come back to this. So for now what we'll do is that will be the end of this video um, and then I'm going to continue filming the other video for the main like sped up video and all of this will be time lapsed basically. Okay so thank you for watching this one. Um, if you did enjoy this um, please tell me in the comments if you want to see a bit more of my design process and also give it a like. That always helps me know that this is something you want to see. If you don't also consider just telling me this was not what you wanted to see on this channel and I'll, um, I won't necessarily do more of these and I'll just speed them up in the normal videos. So yeah, thank you.